Hi, welcome. I'm Catherine Dykes, and uh, I am uh, here today uh, for DTU Wind and Energy Systems representing the Top Farm and Piwake team. Uh, and today I'll be presenting on wind farm design and optimization. Um, by the end of this uh, module, um, you should be able to do a few things. Um, after this lecture, you should be able to uh, describe what systems engineering is. If you're not familiar with the term systems engineering, we'll talk about what that is and, and understanding why it's relevant to wind farm design. Uh, we'll also be looking at what are the key design criteria. Um, when we think about designing a wind farm, uh, what do developers think about? What are the choices that they make? Um, what are the limitations on, on the farm design process that they face? And how do those factor into uh, wind farm design? And then finally, um, you'll get a little exposure, uh, just a taste of uh, um, an introduction to some tools that we use for wind farm design and practice. Um, I'll be using, of course, the tools that we have uh, in-house at DTU, our top farm, uh, top farm and Piwake uh, tool set, and uh, how we actually um, use them for research, uh, looking at wind farm design, and then how we actually work with companies that use, use these tools in practice to actually do uh, design of real wind farms. So I'm going to jump right into it, um, and we'll uh, go to the, the first topic, which is uh, systems engineering. Wind energy systems are complex. Um, over the, uh, the course that you've been uh, involved with so far, I'm sure you've seen several examples of how wind is highly complex and multidisciplinary. There's many different things that go into understanding the physics involved in the wind farm, uh, how they operate, how we maintain them, uh, how they produce electricity, how that gets fed into the electricity grid system. Um, so many things go into it. So, you know, from an engineering perspective, we have uh, disciplines like uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering. Of course, uh, we're dealing with flow. You know, we're dealing with the wind, wind coming into a turbine, wind coming into a wind farm. And of course, that, that flow needs to be well understood. Um, the rotating machinery of the turbine actually transforms the kinetic energy of the wind into power, into electricity, and that gets fed into the electricity system. So we have electrical engineering. But wind turbines are also massive, massive structures. Um, you know, blades today are going uh, beyond 100 meters or more. Um, and so there's um, civil engineering involved with constructing and, and operating these massive uh, uh, technical systems. Um, industrial and manufacturing engineering, uh, system science and control, all of these disciplines in engineering feed into wind energy. On the science side, we have the physics, we have oceanography, we have meteorology, we have materials. Um, mathematics, we increasingly use complex mathematics and we use these tools in the wind farm design process to ensure we have the best type of wind farm um, that we can have for a given site and location and, and with a given suite of technologies. So wind is really complex. Um, and with a complex system like wind energy, it is often uh, useful to, um, to leverage tools that are specifically designed to design, uh, specifically designed for supporting the design and operation of complex technical systems. So if we considered one design uh, discipline at a time, you know, how would a wind farm look? And so, you know, a wind farm itself is quite complex. So let's back it up and just start with a wind turbine. If we thought about, you know, trying to design a wind turbine so that it had the best possible aerodynamic performance, um, you might get one particular design. But if we're thinking about, you know, from the manufacturing standpoint, okay, I want to, I want to design this turbine so that I can manufacture it very cheaply and easily. But what if, uh, you know, my actual design consideration is on the structures? You know, I really want to make sure that this turbine, once I put it out there, can operate safely for 30 years or more and reliably with almost no maintenance, et cetera. So we have all these different disciplines at play, like I said, coming into the turbine design process. And if we actually were to consider one design uh, discipline over the others in terms of driving the de design, we would end up uh, you know, pretty much with a caricature of a turbine. So these are, of course, a little bit silly, but they give a flavor of if we were just kind of looking from a single disciplinary perspective, you know, what could a 
resulting dream turbine look like? And so this is inspired by an old cartoon that came from the aerospace, you know, dream airplanes and adapted for wind turbines. So if we, we look at the aerodynamics, we would get, you know, maybe a, a, a turbine with infinitely many blades that are infinitely thin and just spins and, and captures as much kinetic energy as possible. Um, if we think about the structures, we might have a really beefy machine that actually would probably perform very poorly from an aerodynamics perspective. So this, you know, just brings into, uh, um, brings into our awareness how important it is to actually consider all the different disciplines together when we're thinking about designing a wind turbine or, you know, a, a wind farm is a collection of turbines together. So we have additional design considerations to, to bring into account when we go to the farm level. So wind farms, they're technically complex and highly coupled systems. Hopefully I've convinced you of that. Um, and so when we think about the plant design development and, and operations process, um, you know, we're looking at this uh, uh, wind farm and, you know, it, it's going to operate as a single entity and perform as a single entity. But there's many different stakeholders involved with the actual design process itself. Um, even within a given organization, you have different teams responsible for different stages of the design process. Um, for example, um, there's one team maybe that's focusing on the energy production and understanding how where you place the turbines will Im impact how much energy the farm produces. You might have a whole separate team looking at the electrical design. And so even within an organization, you have different responsibilities related to the, the farm design process. And so if you consider all these things separately, like in the silly example of our dream turbines, you're probably going to get suboptimal performance when you look from the whole system level perspective. And you're going to get suboptimal costs um, from a whole system level perspective. And so we want to try to bring a more holistic approach to how we design and operate wind farms. So systems engineering is a discipline that does exactly that. So this is a a discipline within the field of engineering that seeks to um, look at how to design, integrate, and manage complex system over their entire life cycles. And of course, as we've talked about before, wind farms are such complex system, and so um, you know they're particularly well uh, suited for using systems uh, engineering methods. Um, and the the types of uh, methods that we use, particularly here at DTU Wind and Energy Systems, is uh, complex multidisciplinary design optimization to look at how we can actually design uh, wind farms in the future. So when we try to look at things holistically, it's, it's good to have you know, some metrics that we can use to evaluate uh, a system at a, you know, at a, a whole uh, holistic level. And so within the wind farm uh, uh, space and, and for renewable energy development, often what we use is the levelized cost of energy. You've probably been introduced to this metric in some of the other modules because it's frequently used as an evaluation metric in system design and operation. So what is LCOE? It's a single metric that's trying to bring together all of the factors that influence that holistic performance and cost for the system into one metric. And so you have, uh, in there you have the uh, turbine capital costs. Of course, we have turbines, they cost money, and so you have the turbine capital costs present. But you also have a whole lot of other costs. We, we put these into what we call the balance of system costs. So this could be things like um, the electrical system that I talked about before. Um, it could be things like the, the turbine foundations. Um, you know, so we're increasingly seeing wind farms being built offshore, where you have big foundation structures to support the turbines um, standing on the seabed. And also includes uh, the operational expenditures. So wind farms are put into operation for 10, 20 years or more. And so you have to account for the costs of operations and maintenance for those systems over their lifetime. Then there's also financing effects. And in this very, very simplified LCOE equation, we lump all these financing effects into a single number we call the fixed charge rate. Um, and we're not gonna deal too much with that side of things here. Uh, in this module, but it, it is an important aspect of farm design is how you actually develop the overall financing for the, for the uh, project. That's all of the cost side. And then of course we have the revenue side, which is usually attached to energy production. So AEP, the annual energy production, is a, a, a metric that captures um, how much energy the wind farm will produce over the year. And so when we're looking at farm design, we wanna understand how does our farm design impact the energy production how does it impact the costs? And we boil that up into a single metric and say, if I can get 
a very low cost of energy, then this farm is going to be economically profitable and good for development. And so what we're doing here is looking at how can we actually design farms to get the best possible LCOE, the lowest possible LCOE. So that's what uh, we do in wind farm optimization. And this requires, as I mentioned before, a systems engineering approach because we're trying to capture all the different factors that feed into uh, trying to optimize the LCOE for a wind farm. So wind plant systems engineering. Um, this is a, an area of work uh, that has been active uh, within the research community and the industry practice for many years now. Um, historically, there have been sort of different uh, periods and stages in terms of how we actually employ systems engineering for wind farm design. Uh, going back 10, 20 years ago or so, essentially we didn't do it. Um, you know, systems engineering, the computational tools, the models that we had, um, you know, going back to the early 2000s or so, um, you know, weren't quite ready yet for actual use in wind farm design practice. And so you typically did farm design based on experience. You had senior engineers with a lot of experience doing farm design over and over, and they were able to intuit uh, essentially a good design based on the constraints that you had uh, for, a, for a given site. But, uh, you know, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, um, we saw that there actually could be b benefits to doing um, uh, formal modeling and optimization for wind farm design, focusing really on energy production. And this I'll talk about in a little bit, but comes down to how do we place the wind turbines in the park, and then how does that placement actually affect the uh, overall energy production that the farm will produce over a year, over its lifetime? And can we optimize, use some models to model that flow, model that energy production, and then optimize the placements of the turbines? More recently, though, uh, we're seeing uh, industry um, develop a more strong dependency on using system approaches, using that multidisciplinary I talked about before, and formal optimization techniques to do wind farm design, bringing in more system elements in terms of scope and increasingly high levels of fidelity in the modeling that accurately represent the physics so that we can do computer-aided uh, design of uh, wind farms. And to do this, we're actually also leveraging abundant computational resources that have been improving steadily over time, as well as advanced systems engineering techniques for complex system optimization. And so this is what we do in practice. So today I'm just going to give you a flavor of some of the things that we look at. And hopefully if that spurs your interest, you can dive deeper and, and come join us in learning more about wind farm systems engineering. <laughs> 